Hello world, this is Brian, aka Invisible Doogie, and I'm here back for another quick tutorial, a uh, bit more advanced tutorial, on Project Spark for you guys. So, in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to make one object, this small boulder right here, rotate around another object, this larger boulder right here, with math, instead of um, what you might usually try, which is attachments. Um, so, some of you might think, well, wait a minute, I could just use the attach tool, attach this small boulder to this large boulder, and I then could set the large boulder to turn slowly, and that would solve that. So yes, you can do that, but that's no fun. How about let's do this without attachments whatsoever and solely focus on the math itself. So this is something I was trying to accomplish myself with using vectors and vector angles and uh, vector rotate, and I came up against the wall and I just couldn't figure it out. So I posted it to the Project Spark community, which is just project-spark.org, and thankfully someone in the community came up with the entire solution themselves. So a big thank you goes out to uh, Mr. Hers too, or Mer Hers too, or however he likes to pronounce it best, which is, it's just M-R-H-E-R-S-2, uh, came up with the entire thing for me. So I'm just going to show you what he showed me, give some explanations so that all of you guys can also have uh, one object rota rotating around another. And you know, you can do some really cool things with this. You can create a planet system now inside of Project Spark. Uh, you know, really, your minds can go wild with the possibilities. So let's start with what to do. So um, you are the only brain you're going to be affecting is the brain of the object that is rotating. So that would be this small boulder right here. And we are actually going to use some trigonometry, which is why um, this took, I would have never figured this out because it's been years since I've taken trigonometry. I mean, all the way back in high school was the last time I did it. So, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff has long been forgotten. Uh, but it makes sense, especially if any of you guys are in trigonometry, pay attention to school because these things will help you with video games <laughs> in the future. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to set uh, the radius as well as a time variable, which we will then later use to determine how fast one object moves around the other. So um, when we're setting the initial number variables, we always want to do a once, then we do number variable, I already have time and radius here, I've typed them out. So time, we're going to set that to equal zero for now because we are going to set its movement speed uh, in just a bit. Then also once, so we'll have this as a child, uh, we will set the radius and since it's a pretty large boulder, I'm going to set the radius to equal um, two. Okay, so now we actually set the um, positions. So first we'll start with the Y position. Uh, so you go over to position, uh, then under vector components, choose Y. And again, Y is up and down in the world map. So it's not, it's not important really for uh, using any, any math to determine the rotate because this is just determining how high or low it is in the world itself. So um, this is something that uh, doesn't require too much you know, math at all, really. Uh, but let's see, equals. Um, now we're going to choose the object so it knows that we're talking about that position. I'm going to use the in-world picker. Um, you don't have to use the in-world picker. You can use just anything else that um, defines that object. Maybe if you want to use you know, an object variable or something along those lines. Uh, then we go over and set that position Y uh, and then we want to add some points onto there to move this a bit up in the map. Uh, I don't need to add too many if it's a boulder because um, you know it has a lower um, height in general but I'm just going to set to 0 0.15. If you have a character, like a person, it's probably going to be closer to plus 1. Um, just experiment with that number at the end. You can change that to however much you want, depending on how large or how small the objects are uh, that you're working with. Uh, okay, so now we are going to do uh, the X position. So we got position X. 
and that will equal uh, the radius. So we go into the number variables. Then that is times the sine. So to get to sine, we go to math, trigonometry, <clears throat> and then sine right here. Uh, and then we are going to do sine time. And then that is plus uh, the, I'm just going to copy the round boulder. And then we're going to set the position and set it as x. So now I'm just going to copy this to make it a bit faster, paste it down here. Now we want to do the y position or the z position. So we do position z equals radius multiplied by not sine but cosine time plus round boulder position z. So y sine and cosine. So to illustrate that, for those of you who remember trigonometry, you have um, when you have sine and cosine. So look at look at this you know circle right here. I'm rotating around. Notice how the sine and the cosine degrees are equal to the same, and be, when they're equal to the same, they uh, define the outline of a circle. And so that's why sine and cosine are super powerful tools for creating this circle rotation. Um, so that is why we use some good old fashioned trigonometry because triangles and circles are closer to each other than you think. Um, and so the very last thing we're going to do is we are going to set uh, what the speed of rotation is. So we use the time and we are going to increment that um, by for this, I'm going to do two to make it pretty slow. Um, just use a higher number if you want it to go faster. And that should about do it. So let's, let's switch into test mode. And look what we have here. We have a full rotation. So we'll continue to rotate around the object. Just you know, you, and you can have multiple objects rotate around here, just um, incrementing either their x, y, or z vectors so that they don't fully overlap with each other. And just one other quick thing I will show you is, in case uh, in my game I have basically one object will rotate around another only after a certain thing has happened. So if you want to do that, um, then. Uh, Mr. Hers too also uh, showed how to do this as well. So for that, we're, we should just use some booleans. Uh, that's the easiest way to do things. So um, really, you can kind of you can set whatever win condition for when a boolean is activated. Um, just to follow along with with what he suggested, and, and also. Um, you know, what, what works the best is, let's just say, we're using detect. So we're going to have um, when the player detects this little boulder right here, then we're going to have the an orbit boolean. So this is a boolean variable. We're going to make that equal to true. So this is when you, the character, detects this little boulder, then it's going to, uh, this, this Boolean variable is going to start. So first we then have to say, um, when the orbit Boolean is equal to true, then all of this stuff happens. So let's make all of this child code underneath of that. And now let's run it again. 
So it's too far away to detect me, but when I get closer, then once it detects me, then bam, it goes around there. And there you have it. With the power of math, you can now have one object rotate around another without having to ever worry about um, attachments or any other messy things. Just with the power of math, you can accomplish so much in your game. So that's going to do it for this quick tutorial for you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want other specific tutorial tutorials in the future. I'm working on a Vectors 101 tutorial that I'll probably post next just so that um, you have like a basic understanding of, of how vectors work and how you can use those for uh, creating you know, GUI and, and um, HUD elements and uh, putting things at specific positions on the map. So that's going to come um, probably next. But anyways, this will do it for me. I will talk with you guys next time.